let me introduce uh, Dr. Graham Farker, who receives a Kyoto Prize uh, Basic Sciences this year. Nice to meet you, Dr. Farker. Nice to meet you, Mr. Sato. Thank you very much for your time for this interview. We know you are very busy. It's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, we'd like to sincerely congratulate you on receiving a Kyoto Prize Basic Sciences right now. How, yeah, how do you feel that? I feel like I'm king for a week. King for a week? Good. Emperor for a week. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's an enormous, enormous pleasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's recognition of, a, of an area of work. Mm -hmm. Not just my own work, but the mm -hmm. work of many other people. Yeah. And. Uh, but it's been such a pleasure meeting other people who are so good at what they do, mm -hmm. particularly the Mr. In Dr. Inamori, the mm -hmm. head of the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I, I've got a mixture of emotions when you ask me that question, but, the, <laughs> yeah. but they're, they're, all, they're all good. Good. They're all good. So let me look back in your childhood, would you please tell us uh, some episodes that link to the current research? I know you have traveled a lot when you were young. Yes. Uh, my father was training, getting his agricultural degree and then working in various places, and so he moved around a lot, mm -hmm. including living in Corn uh, Ithaca, New York State, where Cornell University is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think by moving around a lot, it helps you, it rubs off the, removes the, the, the rough edges of the mm -hmm. personality a little bit and makes it easier to get on with people in the short term. Mm -hmm. So I think socially that's an advantage. I think it also, by traveling a lot, I think you, you realize that a lot of patterns are, of behavior are, mm -hmm. Uh, just one of poss one of many different possibilities, mm -hmm. and so I think that's an education in itself, and that I think probably helps in, in, in various ways, including including ways that lead to creative thinking mm -hmm. that goes into the, the best kind of science, mm -hmm. but also I suppose. That Makes you more confident about contacting other people. Mm -hmm. Getting makes collaboration maybe a bit easier. Yeah. So I think I think travel and meeting other cultures, and other people, mm -hmm. is valuable in many different yeah, ways. Yeah, broaden your mind too. Yeah. So travel was one thing. Mm -hmm. I had uh, parents who were very supportive of my curiosity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that they that my father worked in agricultural extension, taking mm -hmm. science to to farmers mm -hmm. meant that there was automatically an interest in, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. new technologies yeah. and new concepts. Mm -hmm. So that was a big influence. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my mother was very proud of her sons and, mm -hmm. and probably you know, helped help them be ambitious and yes. work yes. hard and so on. So, so I was, I was, I had all the good ingredients for my family. Mm -hmm. Since your father was a scientist, that uh, was uh, natural for you to become a scientist mm. too. Yes, well, I think so. I, don't know. I mean, I admired him greatly, mm -hmm. and I do remember thinking that I wanted to be a scientist like him, mm -hmm. even though he wasn't. He was not so much an experimental scientist, or, mm -hmm. although he had done some early work. Mm -hmm. he, as I said, he, as I mentioned, he was more taking the results of other people's science to farmers, but mm -hmm. uh, yes, it was a big influence. I heard that your father gave you a book, uh, the biology book, yeah. and uh, told you some advice. Yes, he, uh, he went on a trip to the United States and mm -hmm. he learned, he heard about biophysics. Mm -hmm. In those, those days, nobody had heard the word biophysics. Mm -hmm. The word biochemistry was understood, the, mm -hmm. the application of chemistry in, to biology. Mm -hmm. But nobody had really heard the word biophysics, and so he came back uh, 
quite interested in, in this topic mm -hmm. and gave me a book on biology. Mm -hmm. And as it happened, uh, as a child I was as asthmatic. I often had asthma in the springtime, mm -hmm. in the spring with all the pollen was in the air. Yeah. And this, this year when I was 14, I was confined to bed for about a week mm -hmm. with asthma. And um, so I read the book in one, one long, mm -hmm. one long hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, well, I, I enjoyed it. it. It's hard to say in retrospect how much was just novelty and how much was intrinsic mm -hmm. enjoyment, but probably a mixture of both. I, mm -hmm. I was, I was interested and fascinated by the bio, biological process, yeah. processes that were described. But also, at that age, 14, mm -hmm. people are always asking, what's, what, what, what do you want to do when you grow up? Or mm -hmm. what's your favorite color? What's your mm -hmm. favorite football team? And uh, it was important to have an opinion, mm -hmm. even if you didn't really have a very strong opinion. Yeah even if the opinion might change from one week to the next. Mm -hmm. but this enabled me to give a, an interesting answer when my aunt, mm -hmm. my aunts or uncles would ask me what I want to do, I could mm -hmm. give them this answer, I want to be a biophysicist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a good label. I and, see. Uh, but there must have been some substance to that thinking because it did actually happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your father was quite influential too. Yes. Yes. Well, Dr. Farco, in fact, to be honest with you, this is my hick. It's too difficult for me to understand that uh, your process-based models of a photosynthesis that you research. Mm -hmm. Would you kind, uh, you kind enough to be a, uh, tell me that what it is? We have the absorption of light, the conversion of light into energy. Mm -hmm and then the use of that energy to capture CO2. In the model we say that the, the overall process mm -hmm. cannot go faster than the slowest one. Mm -hmm. And basically if we just put that into a mathematical form, mm -hmm. um, then of course we have to get the, what in chemistry is called the stoichiometry, correct? Stoichiometry meaning one carbon dioxide, one water, mm -hmm. and so on. So the relationship between the molecules in, in the reaction. And uh, that can be a little bit tricky, but mm -hmm. not, not, not so difficult. So, so in retrospect, it seems rather obvious. But at the time, it wasn't obvious. Mm -hmm. And all the people working in, on these different aspects of photosynthesis, mm -hmm. they were quite confident that their component was the most important, mm -hmm. that their component yeah. was determining how fast photosynthesis could go. But it, it won't surprise you mm -hmm. that in reality, when you integrate the whole picture, mm -hmm. it's as I said, that nothing can go faster than, this, than the slowest see, component. I see, I see. And you need to have them all working yes, together yes, yes. to get the overall mm -hmm. result. And so we just put that into mathematical form. Uh, through your research life, research life. Yeah. Could you please tell us about some experience and episodes that you are kind of discouraged or embarrassed or in trouble? Well, in my PhD, mm -hmm. I started working on stomach of the pores in leaves mm -hmm. that allow carbon dioxide to enter the leaf, but also water leaves the leaf through the same holes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the stomata oscillate they open and then close somewhat with a period of about 30 or 40 minutes. Hmm. And so my thesis was was examining these properties. What, mm -hmm. what affected the oscillations? When did they occur? What was the result? Which species did it? And so on. I, I put a big investment into this. And then a paper came out from Holland. Mm -hmm. by a student had spent five years working on exactly the same thing mm -hmm. and he published this huge paper mm -hmm. that described everything that I was working on. Oh. So I thought my PhD was finished. <laughs> and, uh, but as it turns out, it was probably a good thing because it meant that I then had to concentrate on something more fundamental. Mm -hmm. So I, I often tell that to students and postdocs that 
You mean that that was a good chance for you? In, in retrospect, it was good because it forced me to do an even better job. Mm -hmm. So sometimes disasters mm -hmm. like that... It's not a real disaster. Not a real disaster because it forces you to, to leave the things that are fairly obvious. Mm -hmm. Other people will be doing them anyway. Mm -hmm. And it encourages you to, to take a fresh perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's one negative thing that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, the positive side, we uh, worked up the theory. Do you, do, you put, do you know what isotopes are? Isotopes, this is most, so carbon, for example, has six protons and six neutrons mm -hmm. and a mass of 12. But about 1% of carbon has an extra neutron. It's called carbon-13. It's got seven neutrons and six protons. So it's a, it's a stable carbon. It's not, not like C14, which is unstable. It's a stable carbon, but, but it's heavier. Mm. And it, it, photosynthesis is slower with this uh, C13. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we worked out the theory of what controls the, the C13 content of, of plant material, and we suggested that this ought to be useful in terms of selecting for, for water use efficiency, mm -hmm. more growth for less, for less water, or you know, more growth for the same amount of water or vice versa. And when we did the, I remember when we did the, the test, having this wonderful feeling to see what started off as just an idea mm -hmm. and then becomes mathematics. Mm -hmm then becomes a theory and then mm -hmm. somebody, which is something totally in the mind, mm -hmm. and then somebody else has gone away and planted seeds, mm -hmm. grown mm -hmm. plants, measured their growth. Somebody else has taken the material and mm -hmm. burnt it into a mass spectrometer. Mm -hmm. And this has all been integrated. And you look at the two and you find that they're similar. This, this thing that's come from from a brain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's so mysterious that you can make a prediction about mm -hmm. something from some behavior that you haven't actually seen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that I find, I I find that's mysterious one, uh, and wonderful. Yeah. That's a wonderful message to the younger researcher. Well, well I hope that they have that experience. It's a great experience to have, yeah. So I know that it's, uh, it's good to know that, uh, that Dr. Parker is, uh, is a dancer, too. Right. Was so. May I say it was uh, like uh, you were wearing two hats. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, <clears throat> well, I was certainly training to be a scientist and training to be a dancer at the same mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I recommend that to people if they can have dancing is ideal because it's not only physical. You've got the the physical side of dance, which mm -hmm. is wonderful, but there's also the music, the artistry, and mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. so. So it, it, it stimulates the other side of the mm -hmm. brain. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're mutually, uh, it's mutually beneficial to do, to yeah. do science and something like it's a, dance. It's a good advice to young researchers, stimulate your brain all the time from, yeah. from various aspects. Yes, yeah, some people do it through sport, of course, mm -hmm. and some people do it through, through um, the arts alone, and everybody's got their own. Mm -hmm. In the future, we should try something new to, in order to stimulate you yourself. Yeah, I, you I think I'm getting a bit lazy with time, but I'm not lazy about the science. Mm -hmm. I think I still tackle new scientific problems. Mm -hmm. I, I promised myself that when I go back to Canberra, I'm going to try and get involved in some primitive form of dancing again, but... Good, good. <laughs> I hope to see you dancing someday. Thank you, Mr. Sato. Thank you very much, Dr. Ferker.